Well, as we've been reporting, Iran is vowing revenge after U.S. drone strikes in Baghdad killed the country's top general, Qasem Soleimani. Soleimani was behind hundreds of American deaths and was considered a top terrorist by the United States. Thousands of American troops are now being sent to the region. That's in addition to about 700 soldiers who were deployed to Kuwait earlier this week after protesters stormed the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad. CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams joins us now from Iraq. Holly, what is the latest on the ground? Well, uh, here in Iraq, the parliament is planning on holding an emergency <clears throat> session, and Iraqi politicians with close ties to Iran are calling for the roughly 5,000 U.S. troops based here in Iraq to be ordered out of the country in protest. Uh, that's important because, remember, Iraq is a crucially important counterterrorism base here in the Middle East for the U.S. Also, the U.S. has ordered uh, another 3,000, roughly 3,000 troops to be deployed to the Middle East. The U.S. is urging American citizens... Uh, to leave Iraq, uh, clearly in fear of acts of uh, reprisal. And the language coming from Iran is very harsh. They've called the killing of uh, Major General Qasem Soleimani in a U.S. drone strike an act of international terrorism, uh, and they have vowed to take, quote, harsh revenge. Yeah, you mentioned the, the revenge that they vowed to take. Are we seeing any tangible steps, anything that could be a, har a harbinger for things to come? Not really, but part of what makes this such a dangerous situation is that the Iranians will feel that they have to retaliate. Qasem Soleimani was a national hero, but we cannot know how. Uh, and part of the military genius of Qasem Soleimani, however we may judge him morally, was that he understood that Iran uh, cannot combat the U.S. head-on. So he became a master of asymmetrical warfare, uh, giving money and weapons to militia groups and proxies across the Middle East. And those groups could now target uh, U.S. embassies and military facilities in places like Iraq, uh, Syria and Lebanon. Uh, Soleimani, uh, as we know, of course, was an Iranian military commander, but he was killed by the United States on Iraqi soil. Does that dynamic complicate matters? Yes, it does. Uh, the U.S. is vying for influence with Iran here in Iraq. That's one of the main outcomes of the U.S. Uh, invasion and occupation uh, of Iraq. And the fact that Qasem Soleimani was killed by a, a U.S. drone strike on Iraqi soil that's you know, viewed as a violation of Iraqi sovereignty by many people here makes things more difficult for those Iraqi leaders and Iraqi politicians who would like to defend the American military presence here in Iraq. Now, obviously, Soleimani was powerful and influential among the Iranian ruling class, but what about your average Iranian? Did most people support him? How does the, how is the general public responding to his death? Yeah, he was a revered figure. Um, he apparently came from very humble origins. Uh, when he was initially in the military, emerging as a military leader, he was quite a shadowy figure. But in recent years, uh, he's become a very public figure, something of a of a celebrity, really uh, revered by some in in quite a, a quite a cult like manner, and uh, a source of national pride for many Iranians. Obviously, well-known not just in Iran, but throughout the greater Middle East. How are other countries in the region, the Saudi Arabias, the Israels, how are they rea uh, reacting to, to, to the news of his death? Well, really very much as you would expect, I think. Uh, there's been praise from Israel, no great friend of Iran. Uh, they've called uh, President Trump's act in ordering this drone strike a, a decisive action. Uh, obviously, very harsh rhetoric coming from Iran and threats uh, that they will take revenge. Condemnation from Iraq. And then from other quarters, other countries, just concern that this is a very dangerous escalation uh, of uh, existing tensions between between the US and Iran here in the Middle East. For instance, we heard from the Deputy Foreign Minister of France earlier today who said, uh, we are waking up in a more dangerous world. Holly Williams in Iraq, thank you and stay safe.